And I'm Crystal Page, the Communications Director here at the Conrad Prebus Foundation. Welcome to our initial strategy announcement. Um, in one moment, we will get started. I just want to remind folks of a couple of housekeeping items. If you are not already, please mute yourself. We will have a Q&A at the end to take all of your questions. Please feel free to use the Q&A feature to drop your questions in, and our awesome program grant-making team will respond to those questions in real time. Um, with that, again, we welcome you, and I will hand it over to our CEO, Grant Oliphant. Crystal, thanks so much, and thank you to everyone for being here. Um, it's really, well, I was about to say it's terrific to see all of you, but it's terrific to be with all of you. For those of you I haven't met, I'm Grant Oliphant, and I'm privileged to serve as the CEO for the Conrad Prebus Foundation. And we're here today to talk about our initial strategy, which we're um, calling an initial strategy, even though it's the culmination of years worth of work, because we fully expect it will evolve as we apply it in the community and begin to work with all of you on it. So we're looking forward to that process, and we're looking forward just today to talking about what the plan looks like. I'd love to know who else is here. So um, I just ask that if you could take a moment to write in the chat, uh, you know, who you are, your organization, where you're checking in from, it would be it would be fun to see who we've got here today. And I don't really have a sense. So Crystal, I'm gonna ask if maybe you can help me read this because it's faster than I can keep up with. Yes, it's wonderfully, wonderfully fast. That's fantastic. It's it so like great. Boys and Girls Club from Vista, Boys and Girls Club of the Greater San Diego Foundation for Grossmont and Cuyamaca Colleges, Cuyamaca Colleges, the Ovation Theater, Lorem Foundation. I'm apologizing, I'm learning some of these organizational names. Resounding Joy, North Coast Repertory Theater. We're from all over the region. The Rosen Box Project, SDSU, KC Nonprofits the San Diego Botanic Garden. And if I keep reading them, we will be here all day, but this is so wonderful. We've got Carlsbad, Linda Vista, Whispering Winds Camp, Fantastic. Barnes Tennis Center. I'm gonna hand it back over to you, Grant, but welcome everyone. Wow, Crystal, thank you. You did that better than I um, ever would have been able to. And, uh, but what I'm, you know, what I'm in awe of is that as soon as uh, we said that, I think the counter on my chat, uh, monitor hit 99 plus almost instantly and I'm just delighted to see how many folks are able to join us and and the breadth of coverage from across the the county and the region it's just lovely to see my team and I are incredibly excited about having this conversation with you um, many of you have been grantees of the foundation others of you have been in conversation with us helping us develop this plan uh, maybe you've done an interview with me or you've done an interview with our consultant from Open Impact or a member of the staff and others of you who have just provided us guidance along the way. And I, I want to start by most importantly saying thank you for being a part of this foundation's first two years. You have been an extraordinary reason that we've gotten to the point that we are and we're really grateful. Uh, the strategy that we're sharing today is very much informed by the relationships that we have had uh, with all of you along the way. And that's why we wanted to update you first. A webinar doesn't feel terribly personal, but it was a great way for us to get in touch with everyone who we had been working with and talking with and quickly give you a sense for where we are. So let me dive in. As many of you know even better than I do, Conrad Prebus was committed to giving back to the community he called home for over half a century. He created this foundation as his way of ensuring that his spirit of philanthropy would live on for many decades to come. And I have to tell you, in my experience, it was an extraordinary gift. He gave nearly the entirety of his fortune to the foundation as a legacy for the community. And you simply don't see that very often, especially at this level. And San Diego is the winner for it. And we're delighted. I know I am personally honored to be a part of carrying that legacy forward. I want to thank our board and our entire staff for the um, role that they all have played in helping us develop this plan, especially the board for helping me and the team to translate Conrad's philanthropic legacy into the plan that you'll be hearing about today. 
And I will show pictures of our board later so that you can uh, sort of quasi meet them more personally, but I'm very grateful for the leadership they've displayed. The foundation's priority, as many of you know, during its first two years was to provide much needed funding during the pandemic to organizations doing great work in San Diego. Now, building on that, as the foundation expands its staff and deepens its relationships in the community, we are moving into a more deliberative and interactive way of operating that leans heavily into partnerships and into the wisdom and expertise that resides in our communities. You're going to hear us say that a lot today, but there's a reason, which is that this plan is heavily informed by our belief in trust and community. Today, we are re releasing this initial strategy, or as we think about it, this learning plan, uh, because we know that the plan will evolve as we learn from actually implementing it. It is as much a learning tool for us and for the community as it is a fixed strategy that will tell us what to do over the next few years. The focus of the plan is clear and unequivocal. We will focus in our work at the Conrad Previs Foundation on creating an inclusive, equitable, and dynamic future for all San Diegans. This plan is meant to guide this foundation as we engage and partner with communities, nonprofits, businesses, and government. It is built on a core concept of community well-being. You might have heard me talk about that in recent months, but that concept of community well-being stipulates that everyone's need for a sense of purpose, opportunity, and belonging must be respected and nurtured in a healthy community. Without your insights that you have given us over the past few months, this part of our plan would not have been possible. Over the next 40 minutes or so, we want to walk you through our plan, get your feedback, answer your questions, and enlist your partnership in the next steps. So I'm hoping that sounds good, and let's dive in. In every conversation we have had across the county over the past year, I heard and we heard about the truly incredible assets that San Diego uh, has and that San, Di San Diegans are rightly proud of, and also about the great hopes that that we all have for the future of this region and our lives in it. But we also heard time and again about how many people are being left out and how the potential of San Diego could be so much greater if we would create more opportunities for everyone in this community to genuinely participate in its vitality and success. It became obvious very early on that our plan would need to focus on using our work to contribute to building a San Diego for everyone. So let me talk about how we as a large regional foundation will accomplish that. We believe that a foundation like ours, a large regional private foundation, especially an independent one rooted in the community as Prebus is, has a responsibility to use literally every tool at its disposal to make an impact. For us, that means we are going to commit to being all in on behalf of our mission here. And we're gonna do that in four very specific ways. First, in our grant making, which is really the focus of our presentation today, and Kaberi will be walking you through that in a moment. We aim to advance excellence and shared opportunity in our community through inv investments in groundbreaking institutions, ideas, and people. We expect to grant over $100 million in grant making over the next two years. We also seek to work closely in concert with the community, not, not dictating outcomes, but developing them together and being flexible when circumstances require that we do so. Second, we intend to put our investments to work and not just our grants. We will align our investments as a foundation with our values to ensure that what we do with the 95% of our resources that represents our assets is enhancing the impact we are seeking with our grant making, not undermining it. Also in that vein, we plan to look for opportunities to make investments, actively make investments that advance our mission and impact. In 2023, we will pilot some initial impact investments and then undertake a journey to commit $100 million over the next 10 years into investments that materially advance our mission and the well being of San Diego. 
Third, we plan to do the work and take the time to learn as we go and to share what we're finding out. We really want to know whether our grant making is making a difference. That's the number one principle that our board articulated from day one about impact. We want to know if we're making a difference, just as you all do. And the only way we will keep getting better at our work is if we're honest with all of you about what we're learning, and so we will be. Fourth, we will use our voice on behalf of the people and the issues we support. Foundations have a privileged role in our society, and at Prebus, we believe we have a responsibility to amplify the case for change and the voices of those who are too often ignored. We will use our voices to advocate for policies that we believe will advance purpose, belonging, and opportunity in our region. You might have seen us do that recently in co-signing a letter about the future of Friendship Park. So let's think about the, the big picture in terms of now, how we translate that commitment to go in, all in on behalf of San Diego by looking at how we're thinking about our grant making. Our new strategic plan organi organizes the foundation's work into four programs or focus areas that were driven by Mr. Prebus's instructions for the foundation. They are, many of you are familiar with these, visual and performing arts, medical research, healthcare, and youth success. As we developed our initial plans for these four grant-making programs, we also realized how dependent and connected they are to three other issues that are shaping the future of San Diego, climate change, our border and indigenous communities, and civic dialogue. So our plan acknowledges that those three issues have to inform our work in our four grant making areas. Now I'd like to invite Kaberi Banerjee Murthy, our Chief and Impact Officer, to discuss what our community partnerships and grant making process will look like going forward. I have to say Kaberi is an extraordinary philanthropic leader with more than two decades of experience. And I am personally so happy and we are collectively happy that she has joined our team and is already becoming a presence in San Diego. Kaberi? Thank you, Grant. Well, good morning, everybody. It is so wonderful to be with you here virtually on Valentine's Day, no less. And I look forward to meeting you all in person very soon. As Grant shared, the, pri the foundation's priority over our first two years was to provide much needed funding during the pandemic to organizations that were doing great work in San Diego. And while doing that, we were also listening to ensure that we learned how we could show up in service as we moved forward. We have a strong commitment to engaging the entire community in solutions that will meet the moment. As our foundation expands our staff and deepens our relationship and community, we are moving into ways of operating that lean heavily into partnerships, following the wisdom and expertise within community. We believe that community well-being is highly dependent on ensuring that communities facing the most barriers have accesses to resources, shared vision, and the collaborative infrastructure necessary to survive and thrive. That means that we will be providing capacity building grants to organizations most proximate to communities, and we will be seeking to partner with conveners, leaders, and groups to support collective efforts across our issues and the cross-cutting areas of interest. Our new approach is gonna put a priority on co-creating with community partners who align with our issue area goals. And this will entail an ongoing grant making process rather than set cycles. And we'll use a number of different grant making tools, open applications, requests for proposals, invitation only, and my favorite, community led grant making. We commit to rolling out these different processes and sharing information about funding opportunities throughout the year. For now, what this means for organizations in, interested in seeking a grant from the foundation is to consider a learning plan and how our efforts might align. We will be creating opportunities for organizations to engage with our team and for our team to engage with community. You're gonna, you'll be able to receive notifications for new opportunities by signing up here. Um, and Nancy, thank you so much for dropping the link into the chat. And now we'll pivot to be able to go deep into our four program areas and I want to start by saying that all of this is on the website, but we wanted to take some time to walk you through each one of them. So visual and performing arts. 
Our conversations with communities across San Diego affirm that the arts sector is facing no number of challenges. In terms of access, arts education and arts access are not equally distributed or accessible throughout San Diego. In terms of institution, a number of smaller community arts organizations that are doing wonderful work are underfunded and large institutions try, are trying to diversify their art, artists, leadership, and audiences. In terms of artists and those working in art nonprofits, folks navigating the high cost of living and relatively low salaries makes it hard for the region to retain highly skilled staff and to promote local artists. Our objective is to ensure that great art is created by and accessible to the entire community. So we'll be scaling creative youth development efforts, reviving and advancing public support for the arts, and nurturing a creative and dynamic environment for San Diego artists. In our next area of medical research, community stakeholders affirm the importance of medical research for economic and innovation vitality of the region, which we also heard could be improved by addressing disparities, especially since underrepresented struts Sorry, underrepresented scientists struggle to find funding and lead research projects, and diseases that impact diverse communities are often underfunded. Research studies, including clinical trials, are often inaccessible to diverse populations, specifically people of color and women. And our objective is focused on advancing collaboration, innovation, and equity in medical research. To do this, we'll be seizing opportunities to drive collaboration, investing in underrepresented scientists, and advancing the breadth and diversity of research. In terms of healthcare, San Diego's ecosystem is marked by disparities in terms of access and excellence. It's, we have an outstanding healthcare ecosystem, but it struggles to reach the most vulnerable. For many communities, clinics are the primary healthcare providers and they are understaffed and under-resourced. Additionally, we know that refugee and immigrant communities face a barrier of, of we face a multitude of barriers to care. Community serving organizations struggle to hire and retain qualified, culturally competent healthcare staff and mental health continues to be a critical issue for the region and for youth in particular, especially after COVID. So our objective is to invest in healthcare that will support the mental and physical well-being of all San Diegans by addressing workforce, community health care, and behavioral health. Our fourth area, youth success, is a place where we learned from community leaders that the region lacks a shared vision and a coordinated response for youth. Unfortunately, youth continue to be treated as problems to be solved for the future, rather than the leaders and change agents of today. Leaders also shared that San Diego does not have a collaborative infrastructure needed to drive alignment and cohesion amongst the many small organization, city agencies, and county agencies that are providing very specific differentiated services for youth. Another challenge is that these organizations serving children and youth do not have the bandwidth or policy expertise to drive systems level change or shift public funding. And so our objective is to invest in systems, providers, and communities to support youth to thrive. To do this, we will focus on a shared vision and infrastructure, workforce development, and civic engagement. Now we know that people do not live single issue lives people and communities are inherently complex, and therefore we intend to do our work in the areas of intersection across these area programs. The Foundation's work in these four areas will also acknowledge the importance of three issues critical to the future of San Diego. Addressing climate change, embracing our borders and Indigenous nations, and promoting civic dialogue. These came up time and time again during our community interviews, and I think we believe, and I definitely believe, that some of our most exciting work might happen in these areas and will build the capacity of our region to tackle systemic challenges and opportunities that could threaten or turbocharge our process. So how do we work together? First of all, please review our plan in detail and consider how your work aligns with ours. We're growing our team to engage with you and build partnerships together, and our grant making will arise out of those engagements. 
We will announce opportunities for grant making over the next few months, communicating in every way possible, emails, posts on our websites, and updates at events. And we look most importantly to listening and continuing to learn with you. And so with that, I will turn it back over to Grant. Grant has to remember how to use the unmute button. So <laughs> thank you, Kaberi. Um, really appreciate it. And the reminder that it's Valentine's Day. So thank you to everyone who is taking time to on, today to join us for this. Um, you know, in many ways, this is a, 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 a love letter to the community and to the future of San Diego that we're all joining in writing. And I, I don't take it lightly, the commitment that we all share to the future of this community. Um, you know, a couple of things that I want to that have come up for me as I listen to Kaberi that I just want to point out because I'm sure they're going through everyone's mind. Um, so this plan lays out in some detail uh, as you look at it, which hopefully you will on the website, um, the four program areas that we'll be working in. And in each one, you'll notice that there are three basic strategies or priorities that we're looking at in each of those categories. And if you look at how your work uh, aligns with those three priorities, that's a big indication about how well we presently align or things that you might be thinking about for the future could align in terms of our work and yours. So we hope you'll take the time to do that. That said, as Kaberi and I have, um, have said, the plan is also highly iterative and the relationship that we want to have with the community is highly iterative. Uh, there is not a simple on-off switch that works in a healthy foundation relationship. It's not as simple as looking at, oh, here's the set of strategies. I fit. I don't. I'll apply. I won't. The responsibility that we have as a foundation is to work with the community and all the organizations that we interface to figure out what combination really makes the most sense in terms of advancing our strategies and how organizations might be able to work together. And that takes time and it takes resources. So our plan will evolve and sharpen as we listen and learn from all of you over the next several months. And we're very eager to hear from and build and deeper and deepen the relationships we have with community members across the, the region. Um, you know, since we have the photos of the staff up at the moment, I want to I want to digress uh, for a moment just to say how grateful I am to the team here at Conrad Prebus. Um, it is a it is a small but mighty group, and it's growing as we try to grow our ability to respond to and connect with all of you. But as I as I look at this team, I think with great pride about how um, how eager this team is to connect with you and respond to the community and hear what you have to say and learn from all of you. Uh, the folks you're seeing on the screen are the folks who are are at present in the most outward facing roles uh, that we and we hope you will be connecting with them. Uh, as you as you have questions or as you think about things that you might want to comment or contribute. Uh, you know, it is it is a one of Kaberi's and my favorite sayings through our combined decades of I hate to say a Kaberi decades of experience in found in the foundation world. Um, but I think we've both learned that very crystal clear top-down strategies from foundations never, ever work. And in fact, the best strategies are ones that recognize that community itself holds most of the answers and that community moves at the speed of trust. And this is something you will hear Kaberi and I say to the point of ad nauseum, I suppose, but it's because we really recognize that what we have to do is get into trusting a relationship with all of you and that the caliber of our grant making and the caliber of our strategy will be so much a product of how that relationship develops. And we're really looking forward to identifying solutions and the types of sustained progress we can make together by recognizing that we are partners in this journey who will be collaborating 
and co-creating the strategies as, as we refine them. It is, it is a huge part of our approach to philanthropy that we engage in trusting and authentic relationships. And so I'm going to ask that you bear with us as we continue to develop the team that can do that. And as we continue to roll out specific grant making opportunities uh, so that we have the resources to get behind them and develop that sort of relationship with the grantees in each of the spaces as we roll this out. Finally, I do want to say something about the overlapping areas before I get to the board, <laughs> the overlapping areas. I always mess with the, the sequence of these things. I apologize, by the way. But I do want to say something about the overlapping areas that we identified through the course of our strategic planning process. Uh, I, I don't want to misquote one of my board members, but I remember having a conversation with one of my board members about what she was told when she first came to San Diego. And a very trusted mentor of hers said, boy, what a great town, what a great place to be, but what are you doing going to, and this person used the phrase, the end of the line, because San Diego was in a corner of the country that didn't seem connected in that person's mind over a decade ago with what was happening in whatever their framework was. Well, let me tell you what I see at the quote unquote end of the line. I see the rebirth of an entire country and culture. I see a community that is faced by amazing challenges and by an unparalleled ethos that I have experienced since coming here around innovation and entrepreneurship and finding solutions and doing so in a kind of quiet, non-self-congratulatory way that is amazing. I see here a, a, a connection to a new future for not just San Diego, but a new future for the society that we're a part of and the country that we're a part of. And I think what's so exciting for all of us at the Conrad Prebus Foundation is we want San Diego to be a model for the rest of the country about what is possible in our country, about what a great community can look like and what it looks like for a community to really lean in to the idea of well-being and for a community really to lean in to making itself a place for everyone who lives there. And I'm just... It's it's an incredibly exciting, uh, exciting. Grant, I believe you're on mute. Um, please come back on. I don't know how I did that, but, but what we recognized as we went through our planning process was that the four areas that, that uh, are our program areas for the foundation have to be informed by other influences having happening in San Diego and shaping the future of San Diego. And these three areas just step forward is so obvious that they will flavor our grant making in the four areas as we move forward. So finally, let me just say about our board, since I mentioned a board member a moment ago, um, we are blessed by an incredibly brave and, and thoughtful board. And I'm so grateful for the fact that they they asked me to come here and that they've uh, supported me and the team every step of the way as we have built the team and asked the community questions and engaged. I will tell you that a core principle of theirs from the beginning was that we listen to the community and that whatever direction we set as a foundation, must be guided by what we hear, and that that can't stop just because we roll out a new strategy. And so what you're hearing from us is something that we heard actually at the very beginning of this process from our board. The other thing I would say about this board and my gratitude to them is um, they stepped into the unknown in, in, in taking on the roles that they have and in working to create San Diego's newest, largest foundation, uh, and to give it the type of capacity that they hope will become a hallmark of institutional philanthropy in San Diego. 
they had to go on a journey around what they thought was possible for San Diego and what they thought was possible for philanthropy and the role that this foundation could play in helping San Diego achieve its potential. And at multiple points in our process, it was the board and not necessarily me or the staff who raised the most daring ideas about how far we could go and what we could do in celebrating the potential of this community. So that's what you want from a board. And I'm grateful to be able to acknowledge them in their role. So I think at this stage, um, I, I want to make sure that I am supposed to say what comes next. Because <laughs> I'm spot on, on little, Grant. But You're great. I, uh, I, at this stage, I want to um, I want to say that there is a process of continued learning that we want to invite you on. Step one has been joining us for this webinar. Step two, actually, step one was helping to inform the process and the and the plan along the way. You have helped us shape this plan. It is very much a product of what we heard from all of you. Step two is this webinar. Um, step three, we hope, will be taking the time to read the plan in greater detail on our website. And then we hope step four will be to join us for one of our regional community meetings as we go around the county to talk with you in person about how we see this plan unfolding and how you might connect with us. So Kaberi and I and a whole bunch of other folks from the team will be there and um, we will be uh, sharing our thoughts about the plan and then we will be inviting your questions and your feedback on it. And we really wanna hear from you about what your hopes and dreams and concerns are about the direction that we're taking. Um, you can RSVP to those uh, to those uh, events on our website. And we also hope that you will sign up for further news about the foundation if you're not already on our emailing list and not already receiving emails from us. Please make sure you take the time uh, to look for the link, which I think we're putting in the chat, to make sure that you can um, receive emails from us as we update you on all important funding opportunities and updates to the plan. Finally, I also want to say that this is an ongoing process of learning for us and for you and community engagement for us and for you. So it won't always be about the plan. It will be about ways in which we understand the key elements of the plan. So we, over the next few months, plan to offer learning opportunities around key themes in the plan, like, for example, belonging and what it means to really create a community of belonging where everybody feels like they own that in their own lives and in their own way. And we're just tremendously excited about the role this foundation can play in influencing the community conversation that we have on those issues. And I think on that note, I should probably stop talking and invite Crystal to lead us through the Q&A. Crystal. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Grant and Kaberi. Okay, so if you have a question, there is a Q&A feature at the bottom or the top of your screen. Please make sure you click that button, type in your questions. Our team is answering some of them live, and then I will elevate them as we go. Um, I may even invite you to come off of mute just to make sure we've answered your question. So the first one in was actually Ellie Brown. Ellie, I'm going to hit the um, open to talk. Um, I see your question here specifically was, can you share a little bit more about how the relationship of the issue areas connects to the program focus areas? Are the issue areas a filter for the program focus areas? I wanna make sure, was that question answered for you or do you need a little bit more clarification? Thank you, Crystal. Yeah, a little bit more elaboration would be very helpful. Um, I think Grant had um, mentioned that there was a flavor of the issue areas in the program areas. Um, when I look at the issue areas, they're broad. Um, as Grant had specified, like the more broad the focus areas, mm -hmm. very helpful, I think, for the nonprofit community as we adapt and evolve. Um, but the issue areas, I agree are, are these key issue areas of society right now that we all care about, but I'm, I'm still not really clear on how that intersects with the program areas. Thank you. Um, Kaberi, I will, I will, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, 
And it's a thank you. It's a great question. And in some ways, the answer will evolve as we as we go through this. But here's how I would frame it just at the outset. Um, these are not filters. They are, uh, but they are helpful frames for work we might do in any area. So for example, in the area of youth success, one of the things that we know youth are powerfully motivated by and care a great deal about is the importance of climate change and what the future of the planet looks like for them. So as we look at programs in, in the youth success area, we might take a special look at how organizations are thinking about climate change as they engage youth on issues where that's possible and an opportunity. Um, it does not mean that to be funded in the youth success area, you have to take on one of these three issues. It's just an acknowledgement that as we think about our four program areas, we want to be also in the back of our minds and hopefully in the back of your minds, have you be thinking about, gee, what does it mean to live in this unique place where climate change is playing out the way that it is, where we have the access we do to the border, where we, where we are home to so many indigenous people um, and tribal nations, where, you know, where the, the cross currents in our culture around civic dialogue are playing out in the way that they are. How do we use the work we're doing, be it in youth success or the arts? Um, how do we think about the, the ways in which those intersect with the work we're doing and maybe strengthen what we're doing by reflecting those in them? But it is not a requirement. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, thank you so much for clarifying. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Thank you, Grant. Thank you, Ellie. All right. The next question that came in, I think I'm going to uplift this one to Kaberi uh, from Katie Rocky. What age group are you referring to when you say youth? Um, this is a popular one. I think we've gotten it more than once. Our current definition of youth is up to 26, and that will be something that we continue to um, pulse our way through as we're in relationship and in conversation with community of being able to better understand what you know, what that um, range can look like and is most helpful to the community and the work to be able to do. <laughs> Thank you, Kaberi. Yeah. Great. Okay, let's look at our next question and please feel free to keep typing your questions in the Q&A section. The next one it looks like that we have in is from Abe Hughes. Um, Abe is with ICA and San Diego Arts and Cultures Commission. Is there openness to a joint Tijuana and U.S. collaboration even though uh, they are across the border and may not have a U.S.-based nonprofit. Um, Grant or Kaberi, would you like to take that one? I'm happy to take an initial stab, but I would invite Kaberi to correct me on this one. <laughs> so um, always, actually, but uh, in yeah, so absolutely. I mean, I think we would we would completely be open to it. We have legal requirements that we must meet as a foundation. And our charter is very much about funding opportunities in San Diego County. And so we have to use that as a point of entry, but the idea of funding collaboratives that will be working cross-border on something as important as the cross-border relationship uh, you know, the, the the whole conversation that's happening around this um, world design capital, the idea of the arts as it exists in, in, in multiple ways across the border. You know, this is a region that transcends the border and embraces the border and that must also wrestle with the border. And in all of those ways, as we've discussed it during this plan, um, we think that there are, there are funding opportunities where where that should be part of the focus of the foundation. But we the, the only caveat I have to provide is that we do have legal requirements that we must meet. Thank you, Grant. Kaberi, anything you want to add to that? Otherwise, I'll jump to the next question. I think Grant covered it for us. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so I saw in the Q&A, but also a couple in the chat before we redirected folks to the Q&A, um, a series of questions. It looks like Kate Hatmaker asked, will there be any grant making cycles this spring or before July 1? It looks like um, 
Gaddy Finney asked, are the grants going to be like the last ones? This is if you get a grant, you have to wait three years before applying. So, um, Kaberi, do you want to kick us off on that question? What, what will this grant making process look like? Absolutely. So we are building the road while we're walking it. Um, and a lot of this will be dependent upon how we connect with our grantees and what we hear. Um, as we said, it will not look like the last time where it will be a, a simple um, application process um, with grants going out the door, we're hopeful to be able to do grant making differently and try a number of different ways of um, being able to get resources into community. We will be moving dollars over the course of the year, so definitely before July 1st, um, and we have our different, our four different areas of grant making, and we'll be looking to um, learn in each one of those what makes the most amount of sense. Holy cow, I just got really big on my screen. Um, so we will be looking to find out what that looks like as we go through. And I think the other part that I'll lift up is that, um, you know, as we think about what the work looks like, we'll be, um, we'll really be um, right-sizing and tweaking as we move forward. I saw another uh, question in here about what type of grant making we want to do. Um, I am a big believer in general operating support and multi-year grant commitments um, so that the opportunity to build deeper, longer partnerships is part of um, our process moving forward. And so that's also something that we're going to be looking at. So what was experienced the first time around in the grant making is not the way that it will look like in perpetuity. And I would also share that what we do over the next few years during our learning arc um, may also shift over time as we get better and clearer about what is most useful to community. Thank you, Kaberi. And I also noticed, um, Tom, hopefully that answers your question related to timelines. And then Kira Foody, I noticed you just asked, when does the foundation anticipate making decisions on the first pilot initiatives under the new strategy? Kaberi, I know you started to discuss that, but is there a window of time expectation you foresee? Yes, indeed. And with our uh, with our board members here and Alan on Zoom, um, and none of this will happen until we take our recommendations before the board. Um, our bo One of our board meetings is in March. And so over the course of the year, we will be bringing different uh, initiatives and ideas to them for approval that we will then be able to roll out with community. And before we shift gears, can, Mary, I can just... It, Sorry, go ahead, Grant. Crystal, I just want to add on this one because I know... Um, I know it's a it's it's a question that everybody wants the 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 specific answer to, and there isn't an answer like April one or or July one. It's um, the answer is by the end of the year, we expect to have done a full complement of annual grant making for the foundation, and the process of doing that will be based on our capacity in any given area to do meaningful work. So rather than just open the doors the way we did in the past with, um, with uh, broad open calls for grant, for grant applications, instead we're going to be rolling out specific opportunities and engaging with potential partners in those spaces. And that's why it's so important that we all stay in touch uh, because we will be introducing those as our capacity grows to actually make a meaningful difference in any one of these areas. Great. And I'm going to elevate another couple of grant questions, then we're going to move to some thematic questions. Um, it looks like, uh, Katie, I know you circled back to ask about, do you have to wait a year to apply again? I imagine that's because you've had a grant in the works. Um, there were some questions about how fleshed out does the idea need to be? Um, and I see Jerry Buckley here asked, is there any guidance on minimum or maximum? So again, Grant and Kaberi, I know um, there's that energy and desire to have these things defined, but are there things you can tell us with those types of questions? I would say that we are still in the process of figuring this out. We do not have minimums um, associated. We know that we want to be able to support smaller institutions and larger institutions. And so um, the range of what our grant size might look like um, will, will 
show up accordingly. Um, that isn't to say that the small, the smaller nonprofits would automatically get a smaller grant size, um, and or that a larger organization would automatically get a larger grant. But we want to be able to flesh out each of the uh, the pilots within these four areas and be in conversation with community, both through the community engagements that we'll have this month, as well as being able to talk with nonprofits about what is um, helpful and necessary. And then, of course, be able to bring that back to be able to weight it within um, how we're thinking about budgets overall for the work um, and then be able to share all of that with community. But we, we hope to be able to provide as much clarity as we get closer and closer to being able able to move to um, the operationalizing of the grants. Grant, anything to add? You know, I think the only um, point I would touch on in addition is um, neither Kaberi nor I are big fans of rules that just make life easy for us and for the foundation. So, you know, somebody asked about, do you have to wait a year? Or can you only get one grant every three years? And, and we believe that the answer to that should be based on what the need is in the community and what the opportunities are for the community. And so um, we're, I, I, I think we are going to be talking about those rules as we, as we think about opportunities in every area. Uh, but it is a principle for us that our processes will be simple, our grant making will be accessible, and that the rules will make sense based on what we're actually trying to accomplish. Thank you, Grant and Kaberi. Okay, um, I'm going to ask Veronica and Alexandra. If folks don't know them, they are awesome and, and part of our, our program team here, so make sure you get to know them. Um, folks, if you don't mind responding to any of the other organization-specific questions as we go, I'm going to shift gears um, to some of the bigger picture questions, and then we're going to come back. I think we have about 14 minutes left. But before I go to those questions, Nancy, would you mind dropping the survey in the chat? Um, just so folks know, to prepare for the community meetings, we need your help. We need your input. We have a series of questions for you that will inform those community meetings. We want to know what other questions you have. What do you want to see at the community meetings? Please take the time to fill out that survey. It does not have to be right now, but we will be compiling that and taking it very seriously. Um, so let's go to the next question. Looks like that is from Susie Colby. Susie asks, does the foundation prefer to guide partnerships and help design projects, or is it preferred to have potential grantees bring those to the table? Or is this something we'll wait and learn? So Kaberi, I'm gonna take that and ask you to talk about the relationships. What do these relationships look like over the course of the next few months? Absolutely. So I would say the one of the most important things to underscore here is that we are not interested in um, we're not interested in having, um, being overly directed, directive about what we want organizations to do. We want to be able to be real and honest about the type of impact we're looking to have. And we're most interested in being able to connect with the organizations that are already doing this work. So we are hoping that folks will not be chasing the resources um, or trying to figure out what it is that we want to be able to do. That's not the type of foundation that we want to be. We want to be able to understand what the community needs and then also be able to understand what programs already exist for the work um, and be able to support that accordingly. So it isn't about coming with a, it isn't about, so I guess I will just leave it there. Um, we really wanna be able to be in partnership to both understand the challenges and be able to understand what opportunities already exist. What I will say though, is we are big believers in collaboration and partnerships. And so ideally, not just the grant making, but the conversations and, and convenings that are created will also potentially be able to highlight potential gaps that exist. And if there are opportunities for um, those gaps to be filled, that of course would be something that we would also consider. Thank you, Kaberi. Um, I see a few hands up. We will come back to you. Um, if you have points of clarification, please feel free to also message us in the chat um, for those who have their hands up. I'm gonna go to, it doesn't specify a name, it just says home. Um, home says, I'm interested in learning more about how partnerships could support advocacy efforts. What might that look like? Um, Grant, do you want to answer that question? Yeah, so I think the most the most important uh, part of answering this question is to say that we will support advocacy. Advocacy is an important part of what the nonprofit uh, landscape can do. And so just for example, raising the importance of 
uh, of issues around youth mental health or, or of raising the importance of arts education. Um, in, in any number of ways, there are advocacy opportunities in the areas of work that we're going to be doing. And we will be um, open to working with thoughtful partners about how to advance the agenda in that, in that arena. Um, in terms of what that partnership looks like, it looks a lot like what Barry just described. It is a process of dialogue between the foundation and the organization or a group of organizations in figuring out collectively what we want to make happen and the capacity of the nonprofit sector to influence that. So we're certainly um, open to it. We, uh, we, we see a great opportunity in San Diego for there to be a more active nonprofit um, uh, cadre in the advocacy space and to really push for the types of, of uh, inclusion and equity and dynamism that we're talking about, we're going to need nonprofit partners who are leading into that space. Excellent. Thank I you, Grant. So the one thing I will add to um, Grant's uh, answer is that one of the things that we talk about all of the time and probably the folks here are tired of me saying this phrase out loud, is how do we utilize all of the tools in our toolbox? And so advocacy is a huge piece of this. Um, you know, I think one of the pieces that I was able to navigate um, in my past role was what it looked like to be able to give legislative testimony um, and be able to create the space where it's not just the foundation that's doing that, but creating opportunities for grantee partners to come alongside us and be able to provide um, insights from what we've learned to be able to inform public policy together. Um, and so the grants are a way for us to be able to be in relationship and make sure that the work is happening. But a huge piece of what comes out of that is being able to move to real systems change and knowing that advocacy and policy change is a piece of really being able to shift these systems is an aspect of the work that's going to be really important for us. You can marry. Okay, great. Let's see what else we have here. Um, and Kamari, I've seen it come up a couple times. If folks have an idea they want to discuss, who is the, the person they, that they should contact? Absolutely. So we are building out our team. So we will have more and more people that will fall into that category. Right now, I would ask you to connect with Veronica and Alexandra, who are um, those who are going to be closest to the organizations and the conversations that are informing our learning and our work. Um, and as we grow our team um, with additional amazing folks, we will be sure to share those out so that folks are able to um, have more and more people to be in relationship with at the foundation. Thank you, Kamari and uh, Veronica, thank you for, or Nancy, thank you for dropping Veronica's email into the chat. Um, it looks like Alexandra identified a question from Felicia Shaw that we need to elevate. Um, Felicia asks, how will you make sure small budget nonprofits already doing the work that aligns with your grant making can compete with larger budget organizations with more resources and capacity? Um, I will take that one. So to me, it's really important to make sure that we are not creating unburdens or create are not creating burdens um, for smaller and maybe not as well resourced found uh, organizations that may not have really robust development. Um, arms to be able to still be in relationship with and receive grants from the foundation. And so one of the things that we will be thinking about and looking at real time is how do we reduce the burden on grantees? How do we increase the size of our net grants? And really being able to make sure, especially when we get into that learning phase, that our final reports and our reporting is in service to learning and not just in terms of um, accountability uh, or like or some of the things that their current report or reports um, to philanthropies normally look like. So um, it's a it's a piece that I think will hopefully benefit all, but we're really doing it with a eye towards ensuring that organizations that are closest to the ground doing the work have um, the capacity to be able to um, partner with us. And if I can just add, Crystal, um, to I, I, amen to everything Kaberi just said. <laughs> Uh, and it's why we're building a team and it's why we're changing the application process so that it's um, 
that it's more staged and more focused. Uh, because if we just open the doors in the in the traditional way, what tends to happen is, uh, especially doing that in the absence of longstanding existing relationships and staff who hold those relationships, um, victory almost always goes to larger, well-funded organizations that have significant development teams. And to be clear, we have nothing against larger, well-funded organizations that have significant development teams, but we also are absolutely determined that smaller organizations will get access to the resources of this foundation uh, to reach deeper into community and to be more broadly representative of San Diego. So I just wanna add that for Felicia's excellent question. Thank you, Grant. Um, and I'm sorry, I hit the answer question. Someone asked about the community meetings um, to clarify, at those meetings, um, Grant and Kaberi will talk a bit more in detail about the strategic plan. We will break up into small groups with the different staffers from the team. So you'll have a chance to give us direct input, have a very real conversation with us. There will be some snacks, of course, uh, but really meet the team and start to continue to build those relationships, meet those who you haven't met. Um, so you are encouraged to come and join us um, and we look forward to meeting you all there. Um, there are a few other questions, but I'm looking at the time and believe we need to wind down. So what we'll do is we're going to take any other questions that there are there. Uh, we do have your email so we can follow up, but also we will use these to inform the FAQ that we have on our website. Um, for those who asked, thanks to our wonderful team, the FAQ is on the website. When you go to the grant section, there is a sub tab that says FAQ. You can click on that take a look at those questions, but if you, you need anything, please reach out to our team. You'll get a follow-up email. Uh, with that, Grant, I would like to turn it back to you if there's anything else you'd like to say. Otherwise, we should probably begin to wind down. Well, of course, I can't resist the opportunity. <laughs> I'm just going to say thank you. I, I am actually looking at the, the scroll of questions that I can see. There's so much energy in this town um, around wanting to do good work. There's an amazing breadth of organizations who are engaged in the spheres that we are. It is, I just want to say it is an incredible honor for us to get to do the work that we do. And we're very excited about what we together are going to make uh, possible for San Diego. And we look forward to it. So thank you for joining us for this hour. Thank you for connecting with us again um, as we roll out the, the continued learning process, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much, Grant. Nancy, please drop the survey back in the chat one more time, and folks will please take the time to complete that. And don't forget to sign up for our emails. We'll drop that in the chat. We will send this video out. We'll post it later today. Thank you, everyone, for your time, and have a wonderful day.